James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is July 6, 2023, just after 8 a.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. We're seeing an impact on our electromagnetic shields. This looks like it's been going on for at least three hours, and some of these have peaked at almost 400 hertz. Usually when we see this, what do we see? Our Schumann resonance going off the hook. Let's take a look and see what we have today. And wouldn't you know it, our Schumann resonance has also been going off. Now this only covers about an hour and a half of time. Uh, again, the Schumann resonance model the main model is not up to date and is lagging. We will be able to see some up to date information on the six day comparison. My main question to you guys are, are you able to sense this? And if so, how's it affecting you? Look at the geophone hit we see up here. Obviously these spikes are going off the charts at over 105 Hertz. Very, very strong here. And we started seeing some problems right around 9 UTC time. That has increased. Again, we're probably looking at about three and a half hours of off-the-chart spikes. We'll get a little bit better indication here when we take a look at the six-day comparison. Doing so, we can see that we're really looking at closer to two and a half hours of Schumann resonance spikes, although we had some noise prior to that as well, starting about 9 or 9.30. And these spikes, again, are off this modeling chart that ends at 50 hertz. Now, the other one ended at 105 hertz, and it was off the charts there, so you could pretty much assume it was going to be off the charts on this. What do we really see here? Well, we see that we had very little activity yesterday. We had activity the prior two days. And I've been explaining that this is because our atmosphere is collapsing and the cavity within our atmosphere is collapsing. And the vibrations, whatever they're generated, if it's from solar activity or perhaps from lightning or a handful of other things we're actually seeing these huge spikes because they're bouncing off what we call the d region absorption actual threshold which is the very lowest part of our cavity the closest to earth usually the human resonance would pass right through that and go up through the e and f bounce off the f cavity but that's not what we've been seeing as the magnetosphere collapses so that in turn causes these much larger spikes that we've been seeing. Although there does have to be a cause. And I think we have a couple of causes today. All right, these are our geophone hourly strips. We can see that we started seeing noise in the nine o'clock hour. Each line is an hour cut up into 15 minute strips. Over the last hour and a half on these geophone charts, we saw a lot of activity. But we're missing that last strip here, although it does say it's 1300 UTC time. This is 10, 11, and 12 UTC time. So we're missing an entire hour, and it would be lit up like a Christmas tree like these are. I don't know why these models are lagging as well. All right, some better information here. We can see that this doesn't look like it started until about 10.30 UTC time. And it pushed its way through 12 UTC time. The amplitudes are also lagging by at least an hour. You can see that all of our modeling equipment picked it up. Our geophones, our ULF receivers, our ELF receivers, and our second SR frequency dip in here. And we see amplitudes of only about 18 hertz here where we're seeing much stronger amplitudes on the Schumann model itself 
we will be checking the Tomsk time Russian model to see if this matches up at all. And in fact, we're seeing those spikes on the Tomsk model as well here. You can see the spikes end at right around, well, they really continue and maybe go off the charts, but the strongest part of the spike ends at around 22 to maybe, well, 28 hertz. And we see that it has been spiking here. It looked like it spiked prior to this. So it could be an as the world turned situation, which would be more space weather than CERN. We're going to also check in the lightning in both areas, but this looks like it did occur for about three or four hours and it happened prior to what we're seeing currently. Now I want everyone to see real quickly right here at right at 10 UTC time, again at 1030 UTC time, bottomed out on our electromagnetic shields here. This is Discover Real-Time Solar Wind we don't have excessive solar winds. We don't have excessive plasma. Why would we be having a solar storm right now? Plasma is at 9.26, not even breaking the threshold. Solar winds are at 439. But when we go look, we're going to find out that we're having a solar storm right now. Well, it's because our shields are way down here and very, very weak indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, they've just been cut out here for about 30 minutes for whatever reason so that is it please note yesterday our electromagnetic field here on our phi gsm bt was well much stronger in, in the northern hemisphere so keep that in mind it looks like my hypothesis came together perfectly now, this is not going to just go off by itself. It has to have a source causing it. We all know that CERN messes with vibration and frequency uh, with their experiments trying to create instantaneous luminosity, which they have done again today. My theory here is they're using vibration and frequency to either look into, open a hole to, or ascend to a higher dimension because via string theory, the theory of everything, M string theory, super string theory, vibration is everything. Everything in the universe vibrates at different levels and that actually depends, or a better word, dictates what dimension those things vibrating are. So we're vibrating at a much lower state than a lot of the universe. We're in what's called the fourth dimension, meaning we can only see three, two, and one D. If we were supposedly in the seventh dimension or fifth dimension, we'd be able to see things in, well, 6D, 5D, and 4D, only below your dimension. Now, it's my theory that we could have someone sitting right next to us vibrating at a much higher dimension they could see us but we couldn't see them and i believe that's what they're up to right here trying to see them or open a hole to see them or open a hole to allow them in now that's probable cause number one although it's uh, been ongoing for 12 hours we see over the last three hours here we have a geomagnetic disturbance on the Boulder KP index and a geomagnetic storm on the College index over the last three hours. So this would push me into believing that this was a solar incident, although we looked at Discover and there's no solar winds that are excessive and there's no plasma, which tells us, well, just regular plasma and solar winds are causing this storm. And that would be due to, of course, a what? Failure in our electromagnetic shields and our magnetosphere, which we know we're having 
based on looking at Discover. All right, not only do we have CERN going, we have a geomagnetic disturbance and storm for the last three hours. It looks like we also have a lightning storm over the Myelin Center. And this is getting, well, a little bit further south. This looks like seeding here. This brown stuff looks like seeding. The Myelin Center is going to be up in the hills here. This also looks like seeding here. You can see it's breaking out right on top of the seeding. And those that watch me realize exactly what I'm talking about. There's the Myelin Center. I don't see any lightning. But there is lightning nearby and you can see these storms popping up almost right on top of the modeling center itself although they have no lightning with them many of the storms that formed right there look artificial and a lot of them as they develop and move off towards the east are becoming lightning storms so we have everything playing at one time here and it's going to be hard to put our finger on it we've got cern with instantaneous luminosity we've got storms that are forming near over uh, the modeling station in italy and we also have a solar situation but it looks like that's based on the shields as well so if I had to choose, I personally would choose the last three hours of solar activity, even though there's been none, I would actually combine that with a lack of our magnetosphere, our electromagnetic shields, and the fact that they believe that the Schumann resonance is currently bouncing off the lowest or closest part of the, to the Earth of our electromagnetic shield, our D region absorption level. Now, this is a tricky one, but we see the shields are exactly where I thought they'd be when we would experience this. It's going to take a combo of at least one of those things, plus the lack of our electromagnetic shields like we know are occurring now to cause these Schumann resonance spikes. If this hypothesis continues to work with a shield so weak that we can see, then we're going to go with this. Although, again, there are causes. Please remember, the Schumann resonance never spiked over 37 hertz until 2017, never over 100 hertz until 2019. And now we've seen spikes over 200 hertz as our shields weaken and I believe that's based on a magnetic pole flip that's occurring as we speak. I think that that will be a well slower process than many think, but we'll have to all find out together. God bless you and yours. Share and subscribe. Always remember, anything is possible in Bizarro World.